So good evening, everyone. I welcome you to the Upper Room Kingdom, our, inter our first international service. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus, those who are live, those who are watching the replay. Uh, something I, I know something will be done and said today that will have a great okay. impact on your life. Uh, so I'm excited for all that uh, is going to be said and done on today, uh, for the word that's going to go forth on today. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm just excited, but I'm going to open up in prayer. Uh, and then we're going to move forward uh, with our service. And Father God, we come now, we give you name glory, we give you name honor, we give you name praise. We thank you, God, for this day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, for uh, this, our first Upper Room Kingdom uh, international service. We thank you, God, for uh, everyone who's listening to the sound of my voice, oh God, whether they be live, whether they listen to a replay, a recording. I thank you, God, that this word shall have a great impact on their life, oh God, your glory, oh God. We invite your glory now. Lord, let your glory just, just saturate us. Let it consume us right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against any hindrances, any distractions of the enemy. Okay. We blood block it now in the mighty name of Jesus. For your word says that no weapon that is formed against you shall be with a apostle. Oh God, have your way. Take full charge of this service today in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we worship you now, oh God. We give him all glory, all honor, and all praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. 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 So uh, so we're gonna get started with uh, uh, Elder Cece. Uh, she's gonna come forward and uh, lead us in praise and worship, and then I'll come uh, back and follow suit uh, with what's next in our service, amen. So let's. Give God praise for Elder, Elder Cece, who's going to come and lead us in worship. Thank you. The first song we will do is Here I Am to Worship. I would like to encourage each and everyone to join in and sing aloud and worship God with us as we do our first service online. Amen. Here I am to worship. Here I am to worship. Here I am to say that you're ever lovely, all together, all together, all together, all together, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And I'll never know, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Let's worship him, let's honor him, let's give him praise. 
for he is good, he is good, he is blessed in your forever. We lift your name up this evening, O God. We lift your name up, O God, and we glorify you. You are good, you are great, you are marvelous, O God. Hallelujah to the King of kings, to the Lord of lords. Hallelujah to the Royal Priest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We exalt your name, we exalt your name, we exalt your name, we exalt your name. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you. Thank you, Elder CC, for leading us uh, in worship. Uh, amen. Just setting the atmosphere for us. So, so we thank you for that. Uh, amen. And, and, it, and it's really pushing us forward as, as, as we move deeper into God. So, uh, again, I'm just I'm just excited. Uh, I'm trying to contain it all and, and, and for the word that's, that's to come forth. Uh, but, but one thing that I precedent I want to say is that uh, every time we come on, uh, we have an opportunity to uh, uh, share testimony, a testimony or two, uh, just to encourage others to know again that there's power in prayer, to know that the weapons of your warfare are, 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 are powerful as you continue to be persistent and consistent in prayer. Uh, and so, uh, and so I'm going to bring, uh, pastor, pastor Bev on and those who uh, may not be aware, or maybe those who are watching this replay, uh, she's our senior pastor of Upper Room Kingdom, South Africa. So she's going to come forth, uh, and she's going to share, uh, a couple of testimonies in her own way, uh, just to encourage and to push us uh, uh, to continue to uh, be persistent and consistent in prayer and warfare until we see the results. So let's give God a hand praise for Pastor Ben. Hey. Thank you, Pastor. 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 Thank you, Pastor.
many, many testimonies um, on our side. Um, I tried to count the other day, um, and I think it was yeah. uh, since we started. Um, but they, they are some, they are, they are some that just stands out. And the most recent one is a, a confirmation that we got yesterday. Um, we got a, um, an, um, a message to pray for Asha. I think Asha is five or six. I think she's preschool. Um, Asha was rushed to hospital. And Asha just got sick. And Asha just started having a fever. So off to hospital, they rushed her. And um, Karen sent us a message to, to start praying for Asha. And um, as the norm is, when we get a message like that, we don't hesitate. We go straight to court. That's where we want the answers. And, and that's where we get the quickest answers. So straight to court we went. Um, I think it was about 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and obviously I'm at home, so straight to court. And um, in court, the Holy Spirit said to me, um, start canceling, start rebuking and canceling the spirit of meningitis. Um, and I said, Lord, well, you know, there, nothing has been confirmed. And the Holy Spirit, you just cancel the spirit of uh, meningitis. And I, I cancel the meningitis, I cancel death, I cancel properly, I cancel anything that can, that can be canceled, and I cancel Satan himself. Um, and the afternoon, um, I think it was the next day, Karen sent a message to say that, that Asha is fine, Asha. Asha is stable, she's out of ICU. Um, but apparently what we didn't know is that the doctors told her mother or her parents that when Asha uh, um, recovers, she will be similar to a vegetable, but they will have to start teaching her to eat and to walk and to function again. And um, we didn't stop. The warriors continued to pray for Asha. And um, yesterday we got a message to say, a, ma a mother sent a voice note to say that the doctor said that they, Asha will not respond, Asha will be crippled and I'm paralyzed and Asha will be a vegetable, she will be in a wheelchair, she will have to be fed and all that. But the doctors lied because Asha was jumping and running around and being her old little soul. And we just, we just started praising God. We just started a lot of times we get the verdict and we get the the, um, the testimony, but we forget to praise. So we just praise God like only the colors can in Cape Town. We go <laughs> into, and the praise go, go into warfare and the warfare go into, into demolishing the kingdom of darkness just because they attacked her. So we we love we love her to the enemy. And um, the other testimony that, that, that's also amazing is Marsha Lane, who's in our group with the dreadlocks here. Um, I think it was a grandfather or an uncle or something who was diagnosed with cancer. Great. And, uh, and, um, and Oprah was supposed to go into hospital to go get the verdict as to whether he was going to go to hospice or being sent home because they can't do anything for him anymore. Um, and this was now five days before Oprah was supposed to go to, to get the doctor's report. So Marsha Lane came and said, listen, Oprah's got stage four, I'm not sure what stage he had, but Oprah's got cancer and it doesn't do good. The doctors are going to either send him to hospital or uh, to hospice or he's got to get a verdict that he's dying in so many months. So off we went to go. Oh, off we went again. Um, we, we did warfare at nine o'clock, which is the practice in South Africa. Any prayer request, we go at nine o'clock and we demolish the kingdom of darkness and we go at midnight and we went to court again. So into court we got and we summoned those cancer demons and those lying spirits and those crippling spirits and all that. And we got the verdict that Oka is going to be okay. So when Oprah went to uh, the hospital, he got the doctor's report. No cancer. Amen. No Amen. cancer. Amen. Oh. <laughs> Just praise God. And we went crazy. And Oprah is up and running. Well, not up and running. So Oprah is running. <laughs> <laughs> very well. And Oprah is giving everybody their days. And Oprah is healthy. No cancer. 
Like even the journey is so God all the praise and Amen. all the glory. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Powerful testimonies of the power of prayer, the power of 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 of, of warfare and being persistent and consistent. You hear me say that all the time that you must be persistent and consistent until you see the results. And and we saw in both of those cases, a five, six year old, uh they the doctors pretty much said she was gonna be a vegetable, saying that she pretty much would they was gonna have to feed her and 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 and, and roll around in the wheelchair and et cetera. And 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 and, and the warriors went to the courts of heaven, the warriors interceded, the warriors uh, in, engaged in Indian spiritual warfare, and and all the reports of the doctors came back to be wrong. And who so the, so there's all saying whose report will you will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. And so they, they, regardless yeah. of what the doctors reported, regardless of what the negative outcome looks like or, or what's said, we see right now we have to take charge and, and, and rules to do have dominion and pray and voluntary see results. So we see right now that she's running around. Uh, fully healed, fully healthy, and uh, and 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 Sister Marshallin's uh, grandfather again was was diagnosed with cancer. They were calling hospice. Nothing more the doctors could do. There's nothing more they could do. So it's pretty much saying, okay, he only has so many months to live. And again, in addition, the warriors uh, went to war, went into prayer, took it to the courts of heaven, and we see the result: <laughs> healed of cancer, no signs of cancer. That's the power. Of God, that's the power of intercession, the power of prayer, the power of warfare. So, so just want to encourage you all, regardless of what your circumstance looks like, no matter how many years or months or weeks you've been dealing with it, if you're persistent and consistent in it, you will see the results. So, so we just praise God for those testimonies, and and uh, and Pastor Bev has this saying all the time that that testimonies beget testimonies. The more testimonies we share, the more testimonies will come flowing in. And so uh and so I'm looking forward to to, to more testimonies and, and, and all of your testimonies. Uh and knowing that uh whatever you believe in God for, whatever you're standing on, continue to stand on the promise of God's word. And there's a guarantee, there is a guarantee that you will see the results. Amen. So 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 we're gonna go right on into uh the word of God uh for today. And I'll be coming from uh the book of First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter four, First Corinthians chapter four, verses sixteen through twenty. That's First Corinthians chapter four, verses sixteen through twenty. It has First Corinthians four, verses sixteen through twenty, and it reads. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord wills. And I will know. Not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. I'm reading it's the New King James Version. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And I'll highlight that verse number 20. And I also read that verse 20 from the New Living, New Living Translation. It says, For the kingdom of God. Is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. The kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. So the word for the day will repeat after me. Will you be known? Will you be known? By God's power. By God's power. Say it again. Will you be known? Will you, you be known by God's, by God's power? By God's, by God's power. I was interested enough, all enough, last last night, uh, was having a conversation with uh, mighty woman of God, and uh, the Lord had just put in my spirit, and uh, and so she was kind of saying some of the challenges she was experiencing with um, 
what I call when God detoxes you from church as you know it. Uh, God took me through an entire one year process uh, detoxing me from church as I knew it. I grew up in a church, church boy, but he detoxed me from, from the church as I knew it. And so she's kind of going through that process right now uh, where uh, she, was, she, she called it, it's like a system. She's like, it's, she's like, but it's like, I'm like, okay, I know I need to pray about it, but it's, it's like many leaders, you know, in the body of Christ, they, they're, they're caught up in a system. It's a system. Uh, and what she called it says, you know, pimping the people, so to speak. Um, and these many women of God who do have a heart for God, who, who love God, uh, but uh, the scripture says a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And so it's this system. She like some people don't even realize that they're in this system. So it's like you grew up in a system. Okay, well, this is how you do it this way. This is how you do that. This is how you call for an offering. This is how you get this done. To get So it's a system. And people just get plugged into the system and become what I call status quo Christianity. Status quo. Just, just going through the motions. Just, you know, showing up for service. Get the, the, get the little check marks that I got perfect attendance. Showing up just to have church. But no true transformation. No true transformation out in the valley. Out doing, doing the week. Just, just having church in this, the church system. But understand there's a difference between the the, the, the religious church system and the church system that God put in place, which is his kingdom, the kingdom of God. And so, uh, and so again, with, with some of our frustrations, some of you find yourself, you, you know that God's called you to do more. You know there's more, but it's, it's, it's some of you feel like you've been stuck in this same routine, the same mundane routine. You're going through the motions. You're just going through the motions but not seeing the results, going through the motions, and, but you know there's more, you, something inside of you telling you that there's more. So, so, so we see here in this passage, we find Apostle Paul, he was chastising some of his children in the gospel. Those that he raised up, they seemed to have gotten arrogant, they got puffed up, they had their little cliques, and some felt that their group was better than another, one group was better than another, and they were all falls of Christ. But they had favorites and even began to compare the apostles and other teachers. They began to compare. They got so caught up in their own knowledge and their own gifts as though they gave it to themselves rather than God. They, they began to, to puff up and, 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 and they began to think that they were so great in themselves and not knowing that it was God himself who gave them the gifts, Holy Spirit who gave them the gifts. And so Apostle Paul was challenging them. Paul was reminding them that, uh, of what he and others had already gone through for the gospel. He said, don't forget what, what, what I've gone through, what we've experienced for the gospel, to even bring the gospel to you. And so there were some who got a little notoriety and a little bit of an audience, and now all of a sudden they thought they were even better than the apostles. They thought they were even on a higher level. It was spiritual pride. Mm. And that's how the enemy was beginning to come into their hearts with spiritual pride. They forgot what they were taught, and then they thought that they knew it all all of a sudden. And then the enemy came in, into their hearts, to cause spiritual pride. And we see that in some churches today, that spiritual pride. They feel that they know it all. They feel that they have a, a, a lock on God, a monopoly on God. But again, denying the power. I'm just building my case here, and I'm going to take off. Now, again... The enemy came to the, the heart to the Corinthian church, and Apostle Paul was warning them and exposing those spirits. Just as I mentioned, uh, the conversation that I had last night, I was helping an individual to understand. I said, well, it's a privilege that God is showing you the problem. He, he's diagnosing the problem. He's showing you. He's showing you his heart. You're feeling the burden of God. That this is not what my church is supposed to look like. Yeah, yeah, it looks good on the outside. It looks uh, uh, good, but 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 scripture even talks about uh, 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 dead bones on the inside, or what you you whitewashed uh, walls, so this whitewashed tombs. He talks about so 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 on the outside it looks beautiful, but if you were to do a spiritual X-ray, you see a lot of bones. You see a lot of walking dead, preaching the word, declaring the word, calling on the name of Jesus Christ but denying his power. And so I began to say, I said, well, you, 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 God has shown you because you're going to be a part of the solution. And it's not you alone. There's a remnant that's being raised up. 
there's a remnant that's being raised up. And you wanted a sound of my voice as part of that remnant, as part of warriors that are being raised and say, you know what? I've gone through this motion long enough. I've seen this, this, this show long enough. There has to be more. Where is the power? Where is the true power of God that should be coming through the church? That's me. And we are the church. And he expects us to walk in that power. He expects us to walk in that authority. And so, and so again, that, so Apostle Paul was just warning them, be careful, be careful what's going on. Be careful. Because the spiritual power will come in and anyone will use that as a legal right to come in and steal and rob. But look at this now. The kingdom of God is not about talk. It's not about talk. It's about the demonstration of God's power. Amen. I'm going to say it again. The kingdom of God is not about talk. There's a lot of churches that's talking. But the kingdom of God is about the demonstration of his power. Amen. If it's a church without the demonstration of God's power, it's just, all that is is a good faith-based organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. If there's no demonstration of the power of God, it's just a good faith-based organization. Nothing wrong with that. We thank God, and they do great things in the community. But where's the demonstration of the power? Yes. Jesus came with power. Yeah. He demonstrated yeah. power when he walked the earth. What did he do? He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He yeah. cast out demons. Yes. And did he not say, greater works we shall do? Yes. So the same works that Jesus did, not only should we do it, we have been commanded, and it's a mandate upon your life to do what Jesus did. Yes, Repeat after me. There's a mandate on my life. There's a, There's mandate, a mandate on my life. To do what Jesus did. To do, do what, what Jesus did. And so again, the kingdom of God is not about talk. It's about demonstration of power. And, and, and when you look up the Greek word for power in this passage, uh, it means dunamis. And you, you hear me saying dunamis all the time. Dunamis power. You probably heard Pastor Bev talk about dunamis power. Uh, dunamis. Dunamis. It's, it's, it, and, and look at the definition here. It's physical power. Force. Might. Ability. Effectiveness. Energy. Powerful deeds. Deeds showing physical power. Marvelous works. Power through God's ability. You have power through God's ability to turn around any situation in your life. I'm going to say it again. You have the power, God's power, God's ability to turn around any situation in your life. Now, it, oh, with the physical eyes, it may look impossible. What does the scripture say? With man, it may be impossible, but with God... All things. Amen. He didn't say some things. He didn't say a few things. He said all things. So you either you either gonna believe it's all, or you're not. When he said all, that covers everything. Ooh. That covers everything. He said you can speak to this mountain, be removed, and pass it to the sea, and this mountain must obey you. Amen. Your obstacles must obey you. Preach it. Preach it. it has to. Now, well, you said, but I've been speaking to it. Well, you keep speaking to it and you keep declaring the word of God until it moves because by law, it must obey. Now, yeah. you have stubborn demons that are trying to fight you. Mm. You have the enemies trying to block you. Absolutely. Mm. And you're under higher scrutiny, under higher watch because you've been called to expose the kingdom of darkness. Mm. When, when the enemy knows that you're unraveling and exposing him, yes, you become a higher target. I say all the time, when you start out on this journey, maybe there was one witch a wall assigned to watch, to watch you and to target you. But as you begin to cause more damage, then all of a sudden you get a second witch and a third witch and a fourth witch and a fifth witch and an entire witch's coven that's watching you, that's trying to stop you. And so here they are walking in demonic power. And then here we are sometimes just saying, Lord, please help me. Lord, I don't understand what's going on. Why is it taking all this? It don't take all this. It shouldn't take this long. And the Lord is looking at you and said, I've given you my power. Amen. I've given you my power 
to demonstrate it in the earth. So I need you to walk in my power because I, 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 I want to do it for you. Yes. But by my law, no, I, I, I'll do it through you. I can't do this one for you. I'll do it through you because God's mm -hmm. not getting off his throne. Amen. God's not getting off his throne. Mm -hmm. So he's looking at you. He's looking at me. He said, I want you to rule, subdue, have dominion, but I've given you the power. But watch this now. So, so will you be known by God's power? Hear me clearly. Your background qualifies you because God can work through anyone. Your background, your family history, it qualifies you. So, so we said it already. You're already qualified. Regardless of what you went through, how you came up, your background experiences, you're qualified. You're qualified once you're covered in the blood of Jesus. So you're already qualified. Repeat after me. Say, I'm qualified. I'm qualified. I'm qualified. And watch this now. So, so a kingdom carrier, because you are a kingdom carrier, a warrior of God, a warrior for Christ, you carry the kingdom of God. Luke 17 and 21 says, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. So there's no need for us to be looking for something that's already in us. God's kingdom is already in us. Okay. So that solves part of the problem because if his kingdom is already in us and he called you and he called me to establish his kingdom on this earth and it's already in us. Now, if it's already in us, we just have to get it out of us Amen. for manifestation on earth. Yes, and I say it all the time. You are a seed of God. Amen. God planted you as a seed in the earth. And wherever God plants you, he expects you. He expects you to flourish. He expects you to flourish. He planted you in that neighborhood. He planted you in that city. He planted you in that region. But too much of, of us have been sitting by waiting and watching and waiting and watching and waiting and watching. But haven't been taking initiative to take the territory by force. Look, the enemy didn't, didn't, didn't ask permission to come and take your stuff, to come and take territory. So the enemy is coming to take territory that belongs to us. Then we have to rise up as, 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 as mighty kings and, and priests in the earth and snatch back. What belongs to us. Now, there's some folks who will say it, oh, we'll snatch back. Well, but how do you do it? You take authority. The first place is through prayer. Amen. And then folks say all the time, well, I don't need to be worried about no demons and talking about no demons because they just focus on demons, etc. If you don't know your enemy, if you don't know how your enemy operates, how can you combat it? Because mm. one thing for sure, your enemy studies you. Yeah, sure. They have a whole book, a whole record on your life. Wow. Well, this is what they do. This is what makes them upset. This right here, we tried this last time and it worked. Well, this is what their family lineage has done. This, they have a whole rap sheet on not just you, on your whole bloodline. Yeah, so what they're saying is sometimes, oh, well, well, this doesn't seem to be working here, but let's look at the history of their bloodline. What have we done on this bloodline? Okay. Well, okay, well, this, they, they're giving us pushback here. Well, okay, well, well, we'll put this over. Let's send this this way. Send that, send that to them. Because history shows us that this has worked on this bloodline. And, this, and because it's worked on this bloodline, this was giving us access to, to them because of what's already on their bloodline, because what we've already done on their bloodline. So if they have a whole record book on your life, on your family history, it would pay us great dividends to know how they operate so we can combat and overcome the works of the enemy. You hear folks all the time, well, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I don't have to worry about no demons because I'm covered in the blood. I don't need to talk no demons. They focus deep. I guarantee they're, they're already, the enemy already got their mind. Because one of the biggest things the enemy is to make you think he doesn't exist or make you think that he has no power. One of the biggest lies the church will say is that Satan has no power. Well, right there, that's, that's ignorance. If he had no power, he wouldn't have ability to steal anything from children of God. If he had no power, he won't be able to put sickness and disease and curses. If he had no power, he won't be able to combat our attacks. And if we send an attack, and if he retaliates, if he had no power, he couldn't do that. But the difference is he has, his power is not greater than our power. Amen. His power is not greater than our power.
He may have mm-hmm. power. His witch mm-hmm. warlocks, social dean may have power, but their power is not greater than your power. Amen. But the Lord will not make you walk in his power. That's a choice. Mm-hmm. That's a choice. Mm-hmm. Now, let's go to Psalm 115 and 16, because I want you to see it for yourself. Why is it? Psalm 115, verse 16. Now I'll read the New Living Translation. Psalm 115, verse 16. This is going to put it all in perspective right here. This is going to show you your responsibility. I'm going to show you your responsibility right here. This is your responsibility. It says, the heavens belong to the Lord. But he has given the earth to all humanity. So who did God give the earth to? To us. To us. So now it supports when I say that God is not getting off of his throne. He told you and I to rule, subdue, have dominion. So if the heavens belong to the Lord, he said, okay, now my children, I'm going to send you on earth. And earth belongs to you. He, he gave it to us to, to have dominion over. So, so therefore, that's, so, so we, can, we, can, we can come to the conclusion that if the earth belongs to us, then what happens around us is a reflection of us. What happens or doesn't happen around us is a reflection of us. What goes on in our communities, what goes on in our cities, is a reflection of us. Because he told us to rule. He gave us the earth. So if you don't like something that's going on around you, you have the power, you have the authority to do something about it. Amen. Now, does that mean that those demons have been sitting there for decades and centuries are just going to pack their bags and leave without a fight? No. Because where else do they have to go? So they mm-hmm. now become a battle mm-hmm. for territory. Sure. It becomes mm-hmm. a tough war. Mm-hmm. They know it belongs to you, but mm-hmm. they've been in possession of it for so long until they've been led to believe that now it belongs to them. Mm-hmm. So here we are. There's a battle over your destiny. There's a battle over the blessing of the Lord. And, and, and there's some battles that you win it quickly. There's other battles that may be a little longer because of the intense fight that's coming against you. So, so, so will you be known by your power? Well, what's the secret to the power? The secret to the power is having an effective, a consistent, a persistent life of prayer. It is that simple. I keep saying all the time, it is that simple. It is that simple. That's why the enemy does everything in his power to keep you out of prayer, to make you so tired from praying, to make you so busy from having an effective prayer life. And I say all the time, every child of God prays. There's not one of you in the sound of my voice that does not pray. But I challenge you, are you praying on the level in which God has promoted you? Because the level in which you've been promoted, that is the level in which the enemy is attacking so if you still praying like you on level two. Amen. But God's promoted you to level three. The attack mm-hmm. on your life is based on level three, not where you not on level two. And the enemy doesn't attack you based on where you are currently. They attack you based on where you're going. They already see certain things that's been released. They already see certain things that's already coming your way. So here they are trying to make you believe it hadn't already happened. They're trying mm-hmm. to make you believe your, your spouse hadn't been released. They're trying to make you believe your wealth hadn't been released. They're trying to make you believe your businesses, et cetera, hasn't already believed. Your healing isn't already done. Because if Jesus already said by the strap of Jesus we heal, that's not something he's about to do. Lord, please heal so-and-so. Well, they're already healed because Jesus already healed. They're already healed. But he said the earth is ours. Mm. So therefore, we have to take dominion. Even this physical body, this shell, it's not the real you. This shell, guess what? It's earth. It came from the dust of the ground. And when we die in Christ and go to heaven, this body is going to go back to the dirt. You have power 
over the flesh. So again, look at this passage, it makes it abundantly clear. The heavens belong to the Lord. That's his, domain, his jurisdiction. But he's given the earth. He's given as a gift the earth to all humanity. The Lord says, okay, I got a gift for you. And, and let, me, let me show you how sometimes our prayers are low level. I just mentioned on Bible study the other night that we've been praying for crumbs. Lord, just yeah. let this happen. Lord, if I could just pay these bills. Lord, if I can mm. Lord, if I can just. Lord, please, if I can, if I can just. If I can just. Mm. He gave the earth as a gift to you. Amen. And what does scripture say? The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof. Amen. Amen. And all that dwell there and it all belongs to God. And he Amen. says, Here's my children. I'm gonna gift you with the earth. So that means there's nothing that happens in your life on earth that you don't have the power and authority to do something about it. Will you be known by your power? Will you be known by your power? And see, understand, I know that you're warriors that God is raising up for this end time, warriors that God is raising up to set the captives free, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. That's your, that's your mandate. Mm. So why has there been any, any been fighting you so hard? Why has he been fighting you as hard as he's been fighting you? Because he knows that you are the generational curse breaker. He knows that you are the one that's going to carry the legacy of your family. He knows mm -hmm. that, that, that you are that interruption in your bloodline. It stops with you, the curses, the, 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 the things that you know, it stops with you. Yes. And he knows that. And I teach this all the time. You were not born into your family by accident. You were not sent into your family. Yes. If you were born by blood. If you were adopted, you were not sent there by accident. There's some folks that say, well, I didn't actually be born into this family. I, 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 I can't. No, 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 no. That's not accurate. When you left heaven, before you left heaven, remember, we originated in God. Scripture says our citizenship is in heaven. So you and I, we started out in God. Mm. Scripture says he blew the breath of life and then man became a living soul. It's with that spirit that came out of God. We were spirit. We are spirit beings inside of God. When he blew breath, that's when we became this living being, this living soul. But we originated in God. So when God blew the breath of life, which was us, us, life, we were spirit, we are spirit, he blew us into this shell. That's how our souls, that's how we became living beings. Amen. And that's why when Satan looks at us, he recognizes us because we were in God. When Satan was, would stand over the heart of God and, and, and the glory would illuminate all throughout heaven. Remember, Satan was a cherub angel. He was a custodian of God's glory. He was around God's glory every day. So he saw us as spirit inside of God. That's why when he got cast onto the earth, he looked. He's like, what are y'all doing here? What, what, what's Jackie <laughs> doing here? What, what's Marshall doing here? What, what's Dandelion doing here? What, what's Cece doing here? What, what's Candace doing here? How, how, did they get, how did they get down here? I saw them in God. <laughs> so, then, so now Satan is saying, wait a second. So now Satan say he's raging war. He's raging war against the children of God because one thing, he's jealous of you. Yes. Because, you because remember, he was always around God's glory. He, he was a custodian, a steward of the glory of God. How much of God's glory was disseminated throughout heaven? He was a cherub angel. They, they guard God's glory. That's why when Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden, God put a cherub angel with swords in front of the garden so no one could enter the gate. They guard the presence of God. They guard the glory of God. So Satan recognizes that you can never again be in God's glory. But you can be in God's glory at any given no any given notice, in God's presence at any given time. He's jealous of that. He can no longer have that. He misses that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can get that's why we cannot take God's presence for granted, God's glory for granted, spending time with God for granted. But they recognize it. He can no longer have that. So then now he said, well, if I can no longer have that, I'm going to try to rage war. I'm going to try to hurt God by hurting his children. Because he can't get back into heaven in God's glory again. But you can. So here we are, glory carrying. You carry God's glory. 
So Satan is looking at you like, I used to be able to do that. I, I, I used to carry his load. I, 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 I that again. Can remember when Jesus stripped him? Remember Satan had uh, his onyx and burning and stone. He had all these. He was arrayed in all type of jewels. And and and, and God, when God's love would hit God's heart, it would it would illuminate all through Satan through all of his Lucifer's jewels, and it would make beautiful music in heaven. The pipes and all that stuff. But Jesus stripped him of that. Hey. And so now the glory that was once Is upon it? Lucifer. It's now that's upon that's you. That's so that's every day he sees you, he's reminded of what he cannot have. He's reminded of what he lost. So therefore he's angry and he's trying to wage war against you because you are the one who's going to overturn his kingdom. Amen. Territory God has assigned you. So again, God is saying, you have to wake up to the power that I've given you. Will you be known by God's power and so here we are satan recognizes that you are that curse breaker so again god looked he looked at your bloodline he looked at your family and he knows he saw the curses he saw the curses and god said well by law i'm not getting off my throne so he's looking at the bloodline he said all right i'm gonna send you into this family because i need you to be that curse breaker because I see the, the sacrifices yes, that, that, that some of your ancestors mm -hmm. made, the evil sacrifice, the evil covenants that have been made on bloodlines. He's seen it. He's seen mm -hmm. the continuous things of, of some of your bloodline. He says, so I'm going to send you yes. into Thank this you. family. Thank right. you, Father, this for sending me. Hallelujah. Who has to break the curse. Amen. But to whom much is given, much is required. But here's the thing. When you are sent... Well, you didn't know yet that you were the curse breaker on your family. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. enemy knew it. Yes. So the enemy started fighting you, not from the time you were born, but the time you were conceived in your mother's mm -hmm. womb. They were <laughs> fighting you in the womb. Amen. Some of you, I guarantee you, have stories about, about your, your, the delivery your, your mother went through. The enemy started fighting you in the womb. Because they knew what you would carry. They knew what part of your assignment was. They didn't know all of it because keep in mind, we, we all have stars, 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 stars. And so, so when, remember when the wise men came and found Jesus? It said they looked at the star. They followed the star. They, they, they studied the star. Every child of God has stars. And that's why, mm -hmm. you know, psychics, they get that demonic power. They can read certain things. It's all demonic because they can still read the stars. So that's why enemy, the enemy tries to manipulate your stars. They know certain things about you because of your stars. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We all have stars. They can look up into the sky and recognize that's Jackie's star. That's Danielle's star. That's Cece's star. That's Pastor Ben's star. That's Kenzie's star. That's 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 uh, Edward's star. Whoever's star, that's your star. And so his star, they're saying, okay. I can look at this star and I recognize that this is what they're going to carry. This is what it. So certain things they know, so they start attacking you already. The only way the wise men found Jesus was because they followed his stars. Cool. So wow. here the English trying to manipulate your stars, manipulate your destiny, trying to block your destiny to stop you from moving forward in the things of God. So the fight, you were in a war before you even recognized it. That's true. You were being fought against before you even recognized you were being fought against. Wow. And so now, as the warriors of Christ, you're being raised up Amen. as torchbearers yeah. to overturn every demonic foundation that's been set up in and around your life, in and around your family, in and around your territory. Amen. Jackie, listen. And see, for some of us, we've been so caught up in our stuff. Yeah. Mm. And I say that the Lord gave the earth to you as a gift. And Amen. God said, you looking at the small stuff. You're looking at this one little thing yeah. here, this thing here. He said, I've given you an entire territory. Yeah. Mm. What's going on in your city? What's going on in your community? I've given it unto you. Yes, Lord. Amen. And I raised other men and women of God up that you can partner with to take this city for, my, for, for the kingdom of God. Yes, 
Because remember, it's your job to establish God's kingdom yes. on earth. Yes. Yes. So what is the enemy trying to do? Trying to establish his own kingdom. Yes. God is saying, wait a minute, you've been, you, you, you've been, you've been looking through a small little lens. Mm. And the horizon help you to see that there's far more for you. You and praying mm. about your own stuff. Mm. People, there's stuff in your community. There's stuff in your city oh. that you to be, your eyes need to be opened up to because what you see going on around you is a reflection of you. Jesus. You have to take authority. You have to take your rightful seat and rule there. Because guess what? I say all the time, the earth is not your home. It is your throne. So you have a seat, a throne that is set up in your city. Oh. And it's time for you to take your seat. Thank you. Repeat after me. It's time for me to take my seat. Stand it's time for me to take my seat. So here you are. You have a seat. But the enemy is fighting you, trying to keep you from walking in your authority in your seat. And so here you are. It might have been a 10-year battle, 20-year battle. Amen. And then you just learning now how to fight strategically because there's a strategy. But the years, mm. that, that, that the years that the enemy stole and lost, guess what? God is a redeemer of the time of God will restore the years that have been lost. So don't get out of I wish I knew this then. I wish I knew that now. I lost all this. No, 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 no. God mm. is rewarded for all of us who diligently seek him. God is about to and let me see how great a restorer God is of years. Let's look at the children of Israel. They were in they were in Egyptian bondage captivity for four hundred and thirty years. Mm. Had a slave mindset. Didn't Jesus. even know that they could be set free. Didn't even think mm. they would be set free. Their hope mm. was shattered. But then God raised up a generational curse breaker called Moses. God, God sent a deliverer. You are the deliverer on your bloodline. You are the deliverer in your family. You are a deliverer in your community. And so here's what happened. God said, Moses, I'm going to raise you up. But was there was it not an enemy in the way? There was Pharaoh. Pharaoh did not want to let them go. After all the plagues, after all the retaliation from the kingdom of God against Pharaoh, Pharaoh still did not want to let them go. So then that's, that's a lesson in spiritual warfare. You have to pray in war until you see results because sometimes the enemy will be stubborn. You destroy mm -hmm. a truth and they'll send another truth and they'll send another truth mm -hmm. and another truth and some of you get weary after the third truth. Like, oh, I'm tired of fighting. It should, I should have had breakthrough by now. I should have seen it by now. If the enemy didn't get tired of fighting you, you won't get tired of fighting back. Until Amen. they're all destroyed. Amen. Amen. So God ruled, raised up Moses. He raised up Moses. Amen. And an entire nation. This is the time. And remember, it said they went to the Egyptians. And they got the silver and the gold from them. So they left out of bondage. Wealthy. All, yeah. the, all the silver that the Egyptians had. They had stolen from them. They didn't just have to return what they stole, but they had to return. Look at me. And look at what happened. God did it in one night. Amen. If he can bring an entire nation out in one night, how much more can he do in your life? How much more can he do in your life? One individual. He brought a whole nation out in one night. Jesus. So your circumstances. Wow. When you, when you compare an entire nation and an entire problem of nations, an entire nation that's been in bondage, an entire nation that was in bondage, Jesus. God brought them all out in one night. In one night. You're one person. How much more can God do with all of your prayer requests, all of your challenges, all of your problems? Amen. Yes, one night. Mm. But the thing is, they didn't know when that one night was going to come. Yeah. So you mm. can't chance it and say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to pray about that anymore. I prayed about that long enough. Yes. yes. That's your one night. 
That one, that one time you decided not to pray about it could have been your one night. <laughs> so you can't afford not to pray. You can't afford not to You can't afford not to be on your post. Because there's an enemy who's been fighting you since you were conceived. And they have been yes. making sure that you don't walk in your destiny. But you know that God's given earth to you. He's given you power and authority. So you be saying that no demon, no witch, no world, no sorcerer will stop you by your bloodline from progressing any longer. The name of Jesus. You have to make your mind up. God can't do it for you. You have mm. to be yes. that I will not be moved. I will not be set aside. I will not sit around and be bullied by the enemy. Amen. Amen. You the bear of the legacy. Your family name yes. will be through you. Yes. And, as, and as I was having this conversation last night, the Holy Spirit reminded me of, of a word that God gave me last year. And this is what some of the church has been stuck in. Here's what he said. Much of the church in America is in a demonic cave, denying the true power to live in comfort. Denying the true power of God to live in comfort. In other countries, the church is denying the true power to gain comfort. So here you have one nation that's denying the power of God pretty much to live in comfort because they're living in comfort. In other countries, the church is denying the, the true power because they want to gain comfort. So they're, 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 they're making demonic covenants and, and all this stuff to try to gain some type of power. But it's still for comfort. And the Lord calls it demonic bribery. Demonic bribery. And so, so if, if some of the church has been in a, in a cage, see, the enemy is crafty. He creates his big cage so that some of the church don't even realize that they're in a cage. They're comfor comfortable in it. And so the enemy says, oh, I'm not going to fight them here. I'm going to give them just enough. I'm give them just enough rope. Okay, let them have that. Let them have that so they can stay in this and keep taking these demonic robberies so that they will never truly walk in the power of God and truly make the change in the earth that God required of us to make. And so there's some of the church in this cage, but it's big enough until they feel comfortable in it to where they realize like they're in a cage. And so the enemy has some of the church just sitting in a cage. And so, yeah, we'll let that through. We'll let that through because it'll keep them not really praying the way on the level of their promotion. It'll keep them not not really coming after us and knowing what we're doing behind the scene. It'll keep them at bay. It'll keep the, oh, oh, they don't need to talk about warfare. Let, let's let them let let's make them think. Oh, it's just grace, just living God's grace. You don't have to worry about the enemy. So we'll keep you in that cage of just enough. So that they don't recognize what the enemy is trying to do behind the scenes that's trying to stop their destiny to the point in such a cage until some of the church thinks they're walking in their destiny and oh. are living well below it. Living well below it. Mm. There's some of the church who doesn't even believe in the power of God. There's some of the church who still believes that, that, that healing is just based on God's will. If it's God's will, you can be healed. Sure. The word of God already says we're healed by the strength of Jesus. So it is his will. There's some in the church who don't even believe the miracles miracles exist. Some in the church who don't believe that, that speaking in tongues is real. Denying the power. These are simple things, and they make theology and doctrine off of these different beliefs. Mm -hmm. you, as this end time church, as an end time warrior, you recognize that I have to have a prayer life. You recognize that I have to know how to war and engage the enemy who's engaging me. And that's why the fight has been so heavy. It's been so thick because they already read your stalls. The problem is you were sleeping on yourself. You were underestimating yourself. Not realizing <coughs> how significant you are in the body of Christ. Amen. Hear me clearly. If you don't pray, mm -hmm. if you don't war, some people won't make it. Some destiny will stay locked up except you pray. Oh. There's some who will die except you pray. You just heard those two testimonies today. What would have happened to that young girl? Oh. Had you worries, not pray. What would have happened to Marsha Lee's grandfather had you not accepted the report? Because most people here stage four, well, you know, 
probably not a good outlet. I mean, most people don't make it past stage four cancer. So, uh, you know, and some folks, they'll pray, but they're praying with doubt. You all went to war knowing God, you already healed. You are a healer. He's already healed by a sharp Jesus, and you didn't back down. Death and life is on the line if you don't pray. Now, there's some churches who won't believe you. We don't have that type of power. Oh, that's all oh, that. No, no, we don't have that kind of It's just all on God. Then he just say, I give the earth to you as a gift. So if so, what's happening on the earth you don't like, you do something about it. It's not on God to do something about it. It's on you and I to do something about it. Will you be known by God's power? Will you be known? And we all have it. Every child of God has it. But why is every child of God not walking in it? Why is every church not walking in it? It goes back to the lifestyle of prayer. That's the only way through prayer in the word that that power will be fully activated. Prayer and fasting. Living a fasted lifestyle. Living a lifestyle of prayer. Because we're good for falling on something. I'm going to pray on that and I'm pray on that. And then you get weary because you don't see the results. And then you stop praying on it. We must have a lifestyle of prayer. That is what's going to bring about this revival. To the point. You will get to the point. You will get to the point where manifestation, not just in your life, but in the life of others, will, will become easy. It will become the norm. It will become the norm. But I, what I want you to understand is that the warfare is heavier because there's less time. Scripture, scripture says Satan knows his time is short. So here goes that, that demonic cage again. The enemy wants us to believe, oh, look around. Oh, life is so much better. The, earth, the world is so much better. We have so much advancement. Thing is, things are so much better. Well, we're not in slavery anymore. We're not, at least this is not going anymore. Look at this. We've had this now. But if Satan knows his time is short before Christ return, don't you think that that would mean that the more time goes on, the less time he has? So that would mean that, that, that he, would, he would have to amp it up even more. So what previous generations went through, the warfare that previous generation went through, even on the surface, we can say, oh, well, what was worse than slavery? What was worse than all these things, the Holocaust? And what, what was worse than all of these horrible things? Genocide. And what was worse? What was worse? Apartheid. What was worse than all these things that we experienced? Part of the deception is, because of the advancement, we may have gotten comfortable with certain things, but the enemy is behind it knowing he can't get comfortable because his time is getting shorter and shorter. So I submit to you, the warfare that you are experiencing is greater than the warfare of previous generations. I'm going to say it again. The warfare you have been experiencing is greater than the warfare of your ancestors, of previous generations. Therefore, we can't afford not to pray. We can't afford not to war until we see the tangible results. Amen. So you are that curse breaker. You are Amen. that warrior that God is raising up for now, not tomorrow, not next year, right now. To bring change, not just in your family, but to bring change in your community, to bring change all around you in your city. You are that curse breaker. And the enemy knows that. The enemy sees it. The enemy already studied your stars. But the problem is, does the enemy know and recognize your power more than you know and recognize your power? Wow. That's part of the problem. So I'm, I'm diagnosing the problem. We have more power than we've given ourselves credit. Mm -hmm. But we see in the scripture, the kingdom of God is not about a lot of talk. It's about power. And now is the time for the saints of the most high God to rise up and possess the land. Yes. You are a warrior. Warriors know how to fight. And it's not just, okay, I learned these things and I, I know it all. No, no, no. It's an ongoing thing. A soldier always has to sharpen their tools. Always have to go through more training and more training and more training because every battle was not the same. Every battle was not the same. 
but you're guaranteed victory. You are guaranteed victory if you stay consistent. If you stay consistent. It's not a, a hope. It's not an I wish. You are guaranteed victory. Whatever you believe in God for, whatever you're, you, you, you've been praying about, whatever you've been fasting about, whatever you've been warring about, it's guaranteed victory to manifest yeah. as long as you don't back off. Thank you. It's guaranteed. That's a promise of God. Thank you. But what God is trying to get us to see is, I've given the earth to you as a gift. Mm. Do business until I return. Ain't that something yeah. God left us in charge? Yes. Until Christ returns. Amen. Think about that now. Here we are looking at job situations and, and money and 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 and, and spouses, etc. And and God is saying, I, I, he, he's, he, he, he is the CEO of it all. Hey. And he said, I want you to run my company. Yeah. Oh, but I don't have any experience. But that's why I'm gonna give you Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ can rule and reign in you. God is yeah. giving you His company. He said, Here, run it. I want you to run it. Wow. Now you have to depend on me. You have to seek me. The secret is staying in prayer, saying the word of God, declaring the word of God. But I, God has given you his company called earth. And he says, I want you to bring heaven on earth. Because you're already going to get heaven when you go to heaven. But he said, but I yes. want you to bring heaven on earth. But you said, but yes. I'm in hell. I mean, yes, you've been experiencing some hell because the enemy is fighting against you because the enemy doesn't want you to bring heaven on earth. The enemy doesn't even want you to recognize that you are a piece of heaven. Mm. You came out of God. God's in heaven. You're heaven on earth. And you're supposed to bring more heaven onto yes. earth. Now it's fine. Let, let, there be, let there be those folks who they just want to go to church, get perfect attendance, sing their mm. wonderful song, do enough just to get back to heaven. They're not going to miss heaven. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But you as warriors, you get to experience a piece of heaven on earth and you are supposed to bring heaven on earth you are supposed to overturn satan's kingdom on earth that's our job that's our job we bring light where there is darkness yes and so this is a clarion call this is a this 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 is a a wake-up call this is this god is challenging us will you be known by my power and it's easy god said it's simple it will be activated in prayer a lifestyle of prayer, it'll be activated. Will you be known? Will you be known? Will you be known by God's power? And I know beyond a shadow of that, that 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 you will be known by God's power. Yes. Because testimony, not the testimony, and you will have the proof. Amen. We're not talking in theory. Yeah. We're not Amen. talking about stories that we heard. You will have your own personal stories, your own personal testimonies of what the power of God is like when it comes out of your life. Yes. When it comes out of your life. It's already there. All we have to do is accept it. Accept it. Walk in it. Will you be known by God's power? Amen. That, that, that's all I have. Let's give God hand praise for the word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So will you be known by God's power? Amen. By God's power. Amen. And in and, 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 and the first call, I, I, those who, who may be watching this replay uh, some way out, anywhere across the globe, uh, look, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Christ came that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. More abundantly. So if you're not saved, you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal sin. You just heard about the power of God. You can't walk in the power. You can't get the power except you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. So if you never accept Jesus Christ, you say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I, I want Jesus Christ in my life. Repeat after me. If, if you never accept Lord Jesus Christ, you listen to the sound. I say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You rose again from the dead with all power in your hand. And you ascended to be back in heaven with God the Father. All power is in your hand. I belong to you. I want you to come into my heart now. If you said that for the first time, 
You believe that, then you're saved. It's that simple. And salvation is just the beginning. It's not the end. It, it starts with salvation. Now you can begin to know more about Jesus Christ. It starts. It starts there. So if that's you, that's you. Again, we welcome you to the family of God. We welcome you to the family of God. And, and if that's your first time making that profession, you can send an email to info at thecoregreen.org. That's info at D-O-Q. U-O-I-G-R-E-E-N.org. Again, that's info at D-O-Q-U-O-I-G-R-E-E-N.org. And we'll make sure that you get uh, some information. You just accept Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The second call, uh, you watch it, you're you, you, you streaming. Uh, the, the message touched you, or maybe you, you, you've you been following ministry, et cetera, but, but, but Holy Spirit is letting you know this is home. And this is home. No matter where you are across the globe, this is your home. That I'm your pastor. That I'm your spiritual covering. If you know that that's you, if you know that that's you, no matter where you are across the world, you know that this is home. And Holy Spirit is dealing your heart that this is home. It's not about just being inside the four walls. It's about you being a soldier, a warrior in God's army, partnering with this army to establish God's kingdom on earth. So if that's you, and, 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 and you know that this is home, you can send an email to info at thecoregreen.org. And we will welcome you into the Upper Room Kingdom family. Uh, we'll make sure you get information uh, to get plugged in uh, with our uh, uh, various groups. So that's info at thecoregreen.org. And maybe you listen, you say, well, I already have a church home, but I still feel that this is, um, uh, this is I'm getting supplemental word. I'm still growing here. And, and Apostle Green, uh, I'll serve more as a mentor. So if that's you, uh, you too can send an email to info at thecoregreen.org and you'll get more information uh from from there so 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 if you know that's you uh govern yourselves accordingly amen uh and the last call uh is uh is is um if you know uh good word you sow back into the word you sow back into the word uh god loves a cheerful give of course upper room kingdom uh partners members you you already know you would you sow your seeds when you go to decorygreen.org that's d-o-q-u-o-i-g-r-e-e-n.org decorygreen.org go to the donate tab and you sow with the Lord place in your heart. So remember, don't ever sow a casual seed. Don't ever just sow a random seed. Name that seed. What do you want that seed to accomplish? Write down how much you sowed and what you're naming that seed. And you water it through the word of God. You water it through prayer. Never sow a random casual seed. Name that seed. And you can sow. And some say, well, I already sowed a seed for that particular thing. You can sow many seeds for the same thing. And, and that harvest will be that much greater. So, so, so govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Uh, and so that's, that's all that I have. Uh, Pastor Bev, is there anything you wanted to say before we uh, close out for the evening? Amen. Our first official service, amen, for Upper Room Kingdom International. Uh, so I thank God for the word, uh, that you will apply the word. Uh, you, you, you will uh, take heed to the word. Of course, go back and listen to the word. As Holy Spirit gives you more revelation for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Pastor, did you have something? Well, I think you're muted. I'm not sure. Let me see. I don't hear anything. It doesn't look like it's muted. Let me see. Let me unmute it. Go ahead and see if she. Yeah, um, just to say thank you to everybody who um, tuned in, who logged on. Um, it's highly, highly appreciated. But also thank you to you, Apostle, for taking time out of a very busy schedule to do this for us. Um, we're craving for this kind of service. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you for our hearts and for doing this for us. So um, abundantly, abundant, abundant blessings to you and Donna for taking time apart out of the weekend to do this for us. Thank you so, so much. And the word was awesome. Glory to God. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Glory to God. Glory. This word was for you too. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I know I saw little Miss Candace uh, waving there, but I was trying to she might she went away, but I saw her waving while I was doing that. But uh, uh get, give her uh our love. She already ran away there. Um, so uh um, tell her because you are favorite apostle. <laughs> That's Zoe. <laughs> okay, everyone tell her I say hello, hello, hello. What's going on? Hello. Hello. <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we will close out. And I'm going to close out in prayer. Actually, Pastor Bev, you can go ahead and close us out in prayer. Father God, we thank you so, so much, Father. We give you glory, Father. We give you all the power. Amen. The Amen. Lord, we cannot thank you enough, yes. Father God, for this beautiful, beautiful man, for this awesome message, Father. Thank you that the Holy Spirit took over. Yes. And thank you, Father God, that this is the flesh that we've been craving for, Father, that you are giving to your apostle, Father God. Bless him, Father. Bless his household. Bless his children. Bless his family. Father, bless his, bless his vicinity, Father God. Bless his yes. bank account, Father yes. God. And I speak of thousand four blessings. Deuteronomy 1 verse 11, Father God. And Father, Psalm 90, bless him for as many years as they have been depicted, Father. And we know that they have gone through a difficult time in that hotel for so many months, Father. Lord, give it back to him, Father. Job 225, Father God. Give it all back that the, the locust is stolen and the canker worm is eaten, Father. And thank you, Father. Bless everyone who logged in, who took time out of the weekend. Father, Come and join here and and receive the beautiful meat that you have prepared for us, yes, Father. Lord. This is really, Father God, a dish beyond words. Thank you, Father God, and bless us, Father, as we disperse, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Remember, Amen. We, uh, Monday, Monday, we're going to start our Warriors Prayer Closet. Uh, it's going to be 6 a.m. my time, but I know in South Africa, it's going to be 12 p.m., um, uh, so starting on Monday, this Monday, we're going to start our Warriors Prayer Clause, our Prayer and Warfare, uh, Monday through Friday. So I'm looking forward to that. So this Monday is going to be our, our first launching of that. So uh, bring your prayer request, pray request, put on full armor, and we're going to go to war. Uh, and we're going to expect and know that we're going to command uh, manifestation in our lives. Uh, man, remember that you are the breath of God, and God never will. This is awesome. Amen. It was fun to party. Good night. Bye. Bye. And God bless you. Bye.